What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Jerome, and I'm here tonight with a review for Love and Hip Hop Miami season two, episode nueve, and it was titled um, "Petty Hurts." So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right. So, with this episode, we're gonna start it on the lighter side. So, we had um, spectacular, and we had Winnie the. <laughs> They met up with each other and, you know, they are, you know, Winnie the Pooh is taking these, um, this best man duties to heart. So he's taking, you know, spec to, you know, get some clothes. And I'm like, you could have kept that pimp get up. Ain't no way in hell I would have worn. So then, you know, spec sits him down and he's telling him how, you know, he went and met up with the old boy and, you know, they good and whatnot. So, you know, then um, he's telling him how, you know, it's going to be his son's 13th birthday and, you know, he's just having a get together. And he wants him to come. So then, um, you know, they start talking about Pleasure P. So Pleasure P sent them a group text. He's telling them that, you know, he's not really feeling, um, you know, doing anything with the group, any touring with the group. And, you know, um, what else? The funny, the, the thing is for them, you know, before Pleasure Pete went to Australia to do this tour, he was telling them to get back in the studio to finish the album that they have coming out. And, you know, now he's reneging on his, you know, what he said he was going to do. So, you know, then we see um, Spectacular and Winnie the Pooh. They are celebrating his son's 13th birthday. So. While they're celebrating his birthday, you know, uh, Spectacular says that the old boy is not there and neither is uh, Slickum. So, you know, um, you know, Winnie the Pooh, he's talking about how, you know, with the old boy, he feels like with them trying to get Pretty Ricky back together, that they not supporting him. And I'm like, that nigga got, he is fucked up in the head, like for real, for real. So, um, you know, then Blue is, you know, they they talking about Pleasure P again in this text message. And I'm like, but didn't we just have a whole ass conversation in another scene about this same situation? But again, it's Pleasure P. He's not wanting to do anything with the group. And, you know, Spectacular is like, I feel like it's something going on with him personally. And, you know, Blue wants to know if with or without Pleasure P, will Spectacular be there with him? And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I guess Spectacular was like, he'll think about it. And, you know, they want to sit down and have a conversation with Pleasure P to see where his head is at. All right, you guys, so this shit right here is draining than a motherfucker. So we see Amara, she is rehearsing for a song and you know, she has Prince there. He is acting a plum fucking fool again. She's invited Shay there. And then, you know, Prince tells um, Amara what happened between him and Bobby High at the studio. He almost had to whoop Bobby's ass. And I'm like, self. And myself was like, what, Gerald? And I'm like, do you remember um, Prince almost whooping Bobby's ass? And myself was like, nah, nigga. That didn't happen. Last time we saw Prince in the studio with Bobby, security had him him the fuck up like a you know like a him and a pe or, or like a him and some pants. So nah, didn't happen that way. I was like I didn't. I'm like yeah, I thought so. I didn't think I was losing my mind. So then tomorrow she's talking about how Bobby, you know, Bobby is talking shit about her and how she feels like JoJo is acting funny, which I definitely see where she's coming from because. For Bobby, for JoJo to supposedly be her friend, Bobby has been saying a lot of shit about Amara, but JoJo is not saying anything at all, and more specifically at the VMAs. So, you know, then Shay comes in there, and, you know, Shay is telling Amara how JoJo is not her friend, which I definitely agree with her, which is kind of odd that I agree with Shay. Um, and then, you know, Prince is talking about how he and Amara, not Amara, but JoJo have been friends for 10 years, and I'm like, y'all been friends for 10 years? Oh my god. If y'all say so. Um, so then, you know, um Amara has, you know, it's like, can I have a conversation with Shay by myself? So she and Shay talk. She tells Shay, out of respect for my friend Jojo, I can't be friends with you. And I'm like, that is the dumbest shit that I've ever heard in my fucking life. Because Shay is not cool with Jojo. You gonna tell her you can't be friends with her? No. All you had to say to her was, Hey Shay, I know you're not friends with Jojo. But I'm cool with Jojo and I would appreciate it if you didn't say nothing about Jojo in my presence and vice versa. But no, that would be too much like right for these. All right. So next we see Amara. She's out there running like run for us, run, run for us, run. 
So, you know, she's upset because, like I said, which I kind of jumped the gun, I think. But, you know, they were on a red, JoJo and um, Bobby were on the red carpet of the AM, VMAs. And Bobby was talking shit about her. So, Amara feels some type of way about that, which I definitely 100% agree with it. So, then we see JoJo and um, Bobby. They sit down. And JoJo wants to give her whole woe is me story. I'm like, girl, shut up. Has anybody just actually sat there and just took a look, a good, long, hard look at JoJo? JoJo looks like a hybrid of a Cabbage Patch doll, Miss Piggy, and the Angry Bird. They all look like they combined to one to create JoJo. Um, so, you know, she's talking about how, you know, Amara, need, Amara needs to fight her own battles. I agree with that. Amara does need to fight her own battles. But you don't need to be sitting here with somebody that's her, quote, enemy and let him talk shit about your quote friend like that's bullshit jojo um so then you know she's talking about everything that's going on in her life how her story is failing no shit sure like her relationship is sure failing no shit sure like that's a fake ass relationship that mona put together and you know she's talking about how she seen saw a spiritual advisor and his spiritual advisor told her that someone put a hex on her a spell on her um an incantation um you know voodoo um whatever else you want to come up with i'm like you are really really stretching this shit out like you really believe this girl gonna put all that shit on you like shut the fuck up damn all right so next we see amara she is debuting her single called understanding and she has liz there and she has prince there so liz liz is happy that prince and bobby are not friends anymore because why that takes all the drama out of her relationship with Prince because she feels like, what? Bobby has a crush on Prince. I think it goes both ways, Liz. But whatever, that ain't my business. Um, so yeah, Amara tells her that she invited Bobby and um JoJo there. So, you know, Amara performs her song Understanding and uh, you know, then we see uh, JoJo shows up and Han and Jojo, they get into it and they go back and forth. And I absolutely 100% had to agree with uh, what Amara was saying to Jojo. So if we remember last season of Love and Hip Hop Miami, when, you know, Steph, Hollywood and Veronica were talking about um, Amara, Jojo was like, you know what? Out of respect for this girl, I'm going to step out because I don't want to be around no shit like that. But now we completely flip the script this season. And every time Bobby says something about Amara, you are right there with him and you don't ever check him or say nothing to him like yo that's my friend like i know you got to be for her but i don't want you to talk about her in front of me and i'm not gonna talk about you in, in front of her so then we see bobby he comes in him and amara started to get into it and then amara was like yeah i think you messy but you know man you are cool but then you start talking shit about me so then they start going back and forth and then liz jumps into it talking about you know prince is not gay we know that you're in love with him and all this kind of stuff. So then, you know, Prince, I mean, not Prince, but uh, Bobby gets into it with Liz. I'm like, why is he into it with the girls? So then, you know, him and Amara start going back and forth with one another once again. And then he takes off his wig and he throws it at Amara. He calls her evil. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, this stuff is draining and tiring as fuck when it comes to these group. Like, whew. Mm -mm. all right y'all so then we're gonna try to move over to another lighter side of the episode so we saw trick he was doing a podcast and he had, he had gunplay with him so in this uh podcast they were talking about the colin kaepernick situation you know with him taking a knee to the national anthem and the flag and you know how people took it out of you know out of context saying he was disrespecting the flag the flag is a piece of cloth it's like i don't get why people feel so strong like why are you guys worshiping idolizing a fucking flag like i i, I, I don't get it that is a freedom of speech it's a right of pro it's a right to protest like y'all taking away his amendment rights trying to you know tell him he can't do this and then you dumbass motherfucking president that man is so fucking retarded like i swear to god donald trump is a retarded motherfucker because let's go back to last night with the um the oscars when spike lee gave his speech 
Donald Trump gonna sit there and tweet talking about, you know, um, Spike Lee was being racist against him. Bitch, racist? Do you not know what the fuck racist means? Like, you, and what is he, racist against a, a orange? Like, an orange Oompa Loompa? Like, that's the only thing he can be, and like, and that's not even a race, an orange Oompa Loompa. Like, shut the fuck up, you dumb fuck. So then, you know, um, once the podcast is over, Trick is t- talking to Gunplay, and, you know, Gunplay is telling him how he's working on his music with um, Stuart Little. And, you know, then he says, um, then Trick says, you know, Chaotic wants to have a feature with him. But he heard that um, Chaotic, Chaotic took Joe on a date. So he's like, you know, um, he wants to do something, but he wants Gunplay to be on his side. So I guess Gunplay agrees to it. So then we see Trick. He got um, Gunplay, Young Hollywood, Chaotic, and they all together. They at the beach. They having lunch. Now. In this, they have to catch their own lunch. I would have been like, you know what, Trick? I'm going to have to start my nigga because I'm about to sit here and catch my own fucking food. Like, ugh. Not no crabs. Not no shark. Well, not a shark. Not no crabs. Not no lobster. I might catch a catfish. Actually, I would catch a catfish. Now, I probably won't take it off the hook, but I'll catch a catfish. But any of that other shit, you can keep it, my nigga. I'm just going to sit here and starve. Like, the fuck? Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck it. I'm not catching shit. So then, you know, Chaotic gets to talking about his situation that happened with the police. And, um, you know, they start having a conversation with one another. So then Trick he says he wants to have a cookout between the old school versus the new school. So the old school is going to be Trick and um, Gunplay. And the new school is going to be Chaotic and Young Hollywood. And they so Chaotic and Hollywood, Chaotic and Hollywood was like, okay, so if we win the bet, that means that you're going to have to do a record with us. Which he's like, cool. And Chaotic was like, I didn't expect for you to even want to do a record with me after, you know, me taking Joy out. And, you know, Trick has his little thing about that. I'm like, Trick, shut the fuck up. Nobody cares. So, then we see, you know, Chaotic, he's getting ready for the cook-off. You know, he invites Helga Pataki to his restaurant. And they want her to be a part of it. Like, kind of one of the girls, like in a boxing match, you know, the girls who walk around with the uh, card. So, basically, she's just going to walk around with the food and, you know, serve it to people. Like, guess that's what they want her to do. So, then she asked Chaotic, was that story real that was on the news? And then, once again, Chaotic tells him the same situation that happened. Not going to get into it again. So, then later, we see Trick. He is out getting food. And then they have Michelle Pooch there. I'm like, so Michelle Pooch really has no storyline this season again. Like, why is she back? Again, somebody told me that. So, you know, um, Trick says he's been knowing, you know, Pooch for a long time. He met her at a club and whatnot. And he's talking about how he invited Amada there. And then uh, Pooch had the audacity in her interview to talk about she can see Amara and Trick in a relationship. You must be looking through Ray Charles' eyes and Stevie Wonder's motherfucking eyes because ain't no way on earth I can see that shit like the fuck you must be looking through a blind man's eyes huh nigga nah but Trick says he got a thing for him I'm like again nigga nah nigga nigga nah no no oh no I don't see it ever happening on this earth in hell or in hell y'all and then lastly the cook off so we have everybody there we got Miami Tip we got um Shay there in some booty shorts we got pretty much the whole crew with the exception of Joy and Trina. And somebody else that was... Mis- we ain't saw Joy and Trina in a few... Did we see Joy and Trina last episode? I don't think we did. Moving on. So, you know, um, Am- Shay asks, you know, where is Amara? And then, you know, Liz goes into the whole situation about what happened at Amara's listening party between Prince, her, Bobby, and um, JoJo. And Shay was like, oh, so she finally found out that that bitch wasn't really her friend. And I'm like, for once, Shay was right. Like, who would have thought it? So, um, we saw, like I said, we saw Bob, Bobby was there. So he says he felt bad about what happened between him and Prince. So then he, um, we see, uh, we see, uh, Trick. He shows up in a food truck because they were like, is Trick going to show up? So, you know, Tip, she takes Bobby over there to have a conversation with uh, Prince. So he apologizes to him. He apologizes to uh, Prince for what he did. But, you know, um, Prince wants to know why he did it. 
and he says how Liz don't want them to be cool. And then Bobby goes into this whole spill about how he feels like Liz is manipulating him and she's a manipulator. So then at the end of, they just have a closure that the friendship is over, but they can be cool and cordial with one another. So then Bobby goes back over there with um, Jojo and he's saying, oh shit, I see Helga. And you know, he's like, you know what, since I got my, since I got Tip and uh, Jojo to squash their beef, I'm gonna go for two for two and have Jojo and uh, Veronica squash their beef. So then he takes Veron um, you know, Jojo over to where Veronica is. And he's like, I think I should squash the beef. And Veronica was like, I agree. Like, I, 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 we can squash the beef. And she's like, you know what? How about we do this? How about we have a, um, a, celeb a celebrity boxing match? If I win, we don't be cool. If you win, we cool. And JoJo's like, well, how do you know I want to be cool with you? Bitch, nobody wants to be cool with you. Like, ugh. Like, I don't like JoJo or Veronica. But in, in this scene, I actually like Veronica a lot more than I like JoJo. So she's like, how about we fight right now? So, you know, um, Veronica gets something and she throws it at JoJo and hits JoJo. <clears throat> and, and then JoJo trying to, you know, jump at her. And I'm like, JoJo, you are really bold when security is around. Because I guarantee you if security was not around, you would not have that same battery in your back. But you guys, that was Love and Hip Hop Miami. Like the video. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys on Wednesday for a Black Ink Crew Chicago.